Welcome to the latest video update for the Bankers Investment Trust. I'm joined by the Portfolio Manager, Alex Crook. Alex, thank you for joining me. Thank you. So Alex, around the beginning of the year, you spoke about the possibility of there being a shift around the second half of the year, with value stocks poised to outperform growth. Is this still your view, or has anything happened over the past six months to perhaps make you reconsider or reinforce that view? I think my views about a sort of value recovery in the second half have, have, have changed. I think they've been pushed out much further, maybe almost into next year. And I think what, what's been the dynamics that's shifted a little bit is the politics at play in macro markets in the world has, has really come to now affect people and businesses. So if we go back to the beginning of the year, even I thought that Brexit would get solved sometime around the hard stop that we had in March. And that's been pushed out to the end of September. Uh, the same with trade discussions. Again, Trump uh, in the US managed to get trade discussions and, uh, with Canada and Mexico over the line quite quickly. But clearly with Europe uh, and China, these are going to be much more extended. And I think the challenges we've seen now is that, you know, for consumers buying a house, large ticket items like cars, you know, we're seeing very strong, uh, very slowing sales in these areas. So I think the indecision in, in the politics and how the world is behaving is affecting real people uh, and investment plans and the same thing in businesses. So my view of value of stocks having a better recovery is predicated on some stronger growth coming in the global economy. It's very clear that we're still in a soggy, slow growth environment. So I think we've got to look forward. I, I still have the view that they will uh, recover, but I think it's probably pushing into next year now. So keeping with this theme of value versus growth, the definition of value is fairly subjective with different metrics and methodologies for measuring value. But meanwhile, in an age of technological disruption, it seems many investors are happy to pay a very high premium for growth companies which don't pay a dividend and may in fact be loss making. What do you make of this phenomenon? I think it's a very good question of, of what is a value stock and what is a growth stock. And to me, I think the area of value investing that's difficult is, is when you look at the value of a business, so the assets it owns, the value of its factories, the value of its patents, that is where you can get unstuck, I think, in current markets. Uh, and the reason there is that disruption is, is occurring in a lot of industries. Uh, we see it in banking, we see it uh, throughout the consumer retail area, shopping, uh, and therefore the value of assets you know, is a very difficult thing to, to put a number on, I think, going forward. I think when I think of value, what, what to me is more about is where is the market being too pessimistic about the growth prospects for a business? So it's a perfectly good business with good assets, with good um, uh, trademarks or whatever it may be. But the market's decided there's a cloud out there, there's an uncertainty, and puts a discount on the value. And my job is to evaluate those and, and find the right businesses that can grow, can use new technologies. Again, in the banking sector, you know, the banks are very adept at online banking. How, how can the, where are the winners in that and where can I find uh, good value and not overpay? Equally, at the other end, we, we do need growth and we want some growth stocks, but let's not overpay. Let's not overpay for hype for where investors are just rushing in because it's, it's interesting and it's new, you know, actually which are the real businesses, the real winners over the longer term and let's support those and just be more careful of the others. Many investors are understandably quite nervous about the coming months ahead, with many commentators predicting an end to the US equity bull market and the subsequent ripple effect onto other markets, as well as the Brexit saga and the US-China tariff war giving investors a headache. What are your thoughts on some of these macro level uncertainties? Well, I've mentioned some of those already. I, I do think that discussions around trade tariffs are the, are the most important aspect, really, of, of the future to set, settle down. And because we're investors in global companies and they need to be trade, tra they need to trade frictionless around the world. So I think getting some certainty around that, what are the new rules that we're playing and what's, you know, is incredibly important. And I think that's going to be into next year, really. I think it could get resolved in 19 but I think it's a 2020 story. So I, I think just being a bit cautious around there has meant that I've raised a little bit of cash within the portfolio, bankers' portfolio. So we've been selling stocks. We normally sell stocks that have reached certain price targets that we feel are full and, and expensive. And instead of reinvesting that, I've just kept it back, uh, waiting to see whether this uncertainty throws up some interesting opportunities. Have any of these factors influenced your asset allocation at all? So what that's meant for asset allocation is that we've been probably a larger seller of stocks in both Europe and America. Now, these are markets that have done particularly well this year. They've recovered uh, for different dynamics. The US has got good growth. 
uh, and the growth stocks have done very well. In Europe, it's, it got very cheap last year. It had a very poor 2018, and we've seen some recovery in share prices. So in both markets, we felt that maybe the optimism there is, is too high, and we've taken some profits. So we've seen a little bit of reduction in our US and Europe uh, and an increase in cash within the portfolio. We actually have now no gearing uh, within the trust, and we have a, a small net 2% cash position at the end of June. Alex, thank you very much for joining me.